Hi guys, welcome back. We'll be continuing from where we stop. Uh, let's straight to the movie database API. Uh, you need to get your API key if you haven't. Uh, I will implore you to just go to the website, developers.themoviedb.org. Uh, register and just get your API key because you need the API key to actually make calls to uh, their different uh, endpoints. So this is just because we need to use the movie database API. You might be using some other form of uh, APIs which you may not need an API key or it might be an in-house uh, web service which you could probably need. Probably you might need uh, tokens and likes but that's just by the way. So back to Android Studio. I'll be taking you step by step on how to actually consume uh, APIs uh, via retrofit and uh, using the MVVM flow. And uh, we've actually built a uh, yield. We've set up a retrofit. We've set up uh, the database, the internal database, if we're going to be using it, which is room. So I'll actually be telling you step, step by step on how to create the view model, the repository, and also create your view which is basically going to show uh, what, or what you're cooking together. So here, I'll add straight to the layout, which is uh, what we actually need to start with uh, to actually see or let's have a visual representation of what we are trying to do. So we're trying to create a grid of uh, movies, which is going to be the popular movies, uh, where you could just basically create uh, a layout using coordinator layout to create the toolbar, which we have here, wrapped around the upper layout and in there you could have your relative layout where you're going to have your progress bar just to create a progress uh, to show if uh, you're loading and after loading and the recycler view in the recycler you could specify your layout manager which is the grid layout manager and at the same time you could specify the the span count that's how many uh, items you want to be shown in a particular row so now I, I opt for two now I would like you to look at something quickly. The layout, I'm actually using data binding right inside uh, the XML and uh, looking at the movie card, which is going to be the item of each of the recycler view. That's the item of the recycler view now. I'll look at this closely. We have a data uh, where we have two variables in it. The listener, which is going to serve as the click listener. Probably if you want to click on an item to a detail page. And the second one is the model itself, which is the data, the, which is uh, pointing at the class, the, mov the movie, and we'll give it a name called doc. You give it a name, you could give it a movie name. So from there, we'll interact with each of the views hierarchy. The first is the linear layout. Well, we'll attach the or click listener to that. So when you click, it goes to a different page. The second is the image view. I point at the image from URL. So you could actually create this when you're talking about binding data, which is called the data binding uh, adapter. So I actually create that in a separate package with a class called binding adapter. So these are like helper functions that will help you to execute tax with your view. Now the bind image from URL, URL is only taking two parameters or two arguments, the image view and the URL, which is uh, the string, the data itself. So what are you doing? You can manipulate this. You can extend further. I need to actually attach a, a predefined link or a, a predefined URL, which is pointing to the width of 500 for the image of the particular picture we are trying to render. And I'm using Glide to actually do that, to, to render that. So you can see, I could still use Glide, I could still use like which we could still do it the same way we'll be doing, but just that we need to specify the format, which is the image from URL, which you actually specify here from the bind adapter. The same thing goes for the user rating. I need to actually convert uh, the rating, which is double, to string, so that I could actually set that to the text view, so which I actually did over here. So that's just basically what uh, that stands for, which is the, the user rating over here. So let's head straight to the logic. How are we able to execute this? How are we able to, to get this all together? So I'll actually show you this. Uh, we've actually created the, the service. We've created that earlier, uh, but now we need to integrate to write something in there, which is uh, the get verb. Now what are we getting? 
we're getting the movie popular. Now we'll be able to populate the endpoint as well, which is pointing at the API, the, the, mov the movie db.org forward slash three. That's the third version. So this particular endpoint is constant. It might not be changing throughout the course of the application. So that's why it's actually in a companion object with uh, the capital endpoint. It's a constant. Now we're getting the popular movies. We need some things to actually fetch this from the API. We need the API key, which we specify, and the response. What result are you getting back? So the response is coming as the movies response, which is going to be a model, a, part, uh, a class where we're going to actually have the metadata of the particular movie. So for you to be able to get the API key, which I've talked earlier, you need to actually get that from the MovieDB uh, website, but you need to keep this secretly. I need to teach you this uh, in case uh, you're trying to reverse engineer your app. You need to add this in the Gradle properties. In the Gradle properties, you could specify a string. I did that called MovieDB API token. Uh, it's a string. You, you need to paste the, the, the API key in here and from for you to trigger this, you need to go to the build Gradle uh, where you call the build types for each one of these. So it's going to actually build with each of your projects. Uh, you give it a constant name called MovieDB API token. You could give it any name. And you point at the Gradle repository, uh, the Gradle properties that you've actually specified, which is MovieDB API token. From that, you build. You, you will be able to call this in any, uh, any file in your project so you could make reference to the movie to the movie db api token so that's just how to uh conceal uh your token your api key if you're actually using api key in projects or some secret keys that you don't want that to be exposed or to be exported to github or to be public so you have to actually do it this way gradle will take care of its obfusc obfuscation so now We've actually covered the binding adapter and the service. Uh, you create a model, which is the movie's response, uh, which uh, is actually going, that's the entry point uh, into the, uh, when you're trying to parse the JSON that you're getting back. But we're going to actually be, uh, be con uh, take cognizance of the movies, which is a list, and uh, it adds a model of movie. That's where you get to have the poster parts, the overview, original titles, backdrop, and likes. We've actually talked extensively about the MovieDB API. So, but where we want to actually look at is the way we're going to actually interact with this, the way we're going to call it. So I created a package called UI. And the UI, I have an inner package called Home. I actually want to, uh, it's good to actually separate consigns, create packages, create uh, folders for each of your implementation in the UI. Now in the home, that's the home page. In there, we have the adapter, we have the repository, we have the view model, and we have its activity. If you are trying to use uh, navigation, you might have one activity and fragments for each other uh, of the view, which we'll be doing if we, are uh, uh, if we are trying to elaborate on this movie API project. Now in the main activity, which is the launcher, which happens to also be the launcher, I'd like, I'd like you to look at how short it is, where we'll be able to uh, interact with well, the, the, the pieces we need. First of all, uh, the binding, I actually created a helper method called content view that actually is going to help us to actually bind our activity to its view. I'm calling just the layout activity main. Fine. Now the view model itself, I'll show you how we're actually going to structure the view model with the adapter. So let's get to look at the view model. Let's get to look at the repository and come back here. Now the view, now the repository first. In the repository, this is where you're going to specify if you're actually fetching directly from the API or you're fetching from the local database or you are also fetching from the API, saving to the local database. It depends on the logic at hand. But at this moment, we just want to fetch directly from the uh, API via the network, which you're going to create a suspense. Fetch popular, we need an API key and we need a response, which is the movie's response. That's just it. So we actually injected the movie app service. We've actually had that initially from DI and uh, we've injected that into the constructor. So we could make reference to the object and call the get popular movies and passing its API key that will be passing along in there. 
which will be coming from the view model. Now look at the view model. The view, the view model is going to be the intermediary within the view and the repository. So in the view model, we have a method called fetch popular that takes API key as uh, an argument and uh, we created a view model scope, which is actually a coroutine scope, uh, which is actually going to run this in the background because you actually need to, to do this in a background thread. And let's not forget, you need to add the at yield view model. With that view model, uh, yield uh, determines that, okay, this is an injection. I'm going to actually do this right. And it's for the view model. And if you notice, we injected the repository as well in here. So I'll be able to uh, use it. So we have a try and catch block. The first try is you, you need to check if there's an internet connection. There's an helper method to actually do that, to know if it's Wi-Fi or to know uh, if uh, it's uh, via cellular or internet, any, any network available or if it's the device network. So it's going to actually test if they are all available uh, before it moves ahead. Now, if it's not, it gives a no internet connection. But if it is, it gets to uh, call the repository, uh, call the method and pass the API key needed and get this response back. So uh, we are, you need to also handle exceptions. There could be exceptions where probably iOS exception as uh, input and output exception or other form of exception. Probably the model are not consistent, which I actually use conversion error. So you could actually catch it right there and spit it to the user uh, gracefully. And um, the response is very, very important, uh, which you actually post it uh, to the mutable live data. You know, you have to post this in the multiple live data. Uh, you post the response body right back to the movie data. So now it's a live data that will be called from the view itself. And this is going to be what is going to be observed. Once you you, you, you have an, a, 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 an effect with the live data, you need to observe it because it changes and uh, it changes on the fly, which is actually going to tell the view if there's data available or not. So we're going to be observing on this movie popular. After we might have called this fetch popular and passing its API key parameter. So you do that in the main activity, uh, which we're going to be looking in a chief way. Firstly, you need to write your recycler view, create it to adapt, adapt, adapter. Uh, so you need to do that during the bind run, since we've actually uh, bind that to its view already. Now, this is the way you could call the fetch popular, look at the way. Uh, you will make an instance to the view model uh, calling the view models. So with that, you have an object of view model. And at the same time, you need to use the yields at 100 entry points. So it tells you to say, oh, this is an entry point. This is a view right into your application. And um, you call the fetch popular since you have an object of the view model. And look at the way we've been able to pass the API key using the build config dot movie DB API token. With that, it passes it into the fetch popular method and actually runs that. After that, you need to observe on that action you've just done. And while observing, you could see what's going on uh, under the hood. You call the object of the view model as well, point to the movie popular, which is the live data and observe on this, passing the this, which is a constant. If it's a view model, it could be view life cycle. And in there, you're going to actually need to listen to three different uh, scenarios on success, on error, and on loading. On success, on, on loading, you could sh probably show uh, the loader, oh, something is actually going on. And uh, on error, you need to actually handle that gracefully and show it toast to the user. Probably there's no network. And on success, what are you going to do? You take the data, which is it. Yeah, you pass that to a data and uh, you call the list because we're actually displaying the list to the view. So where are you taking the list to? It needs an adapter to actually bind it to the recycler view. That's just it. And you go straight down to your adapter, which is here. So we're going to actually look at what our adapter looks like. Adapter is just the simple recycler view adapter that we've been used to, which has the on create view order, on bind view order, and at the same time, the view order itself. So that's just it. We just that we create an interface which is actually going to uh, be attached to the listener, which is a click listener, so that a click on a particular card is actually going to take us to the DTP with data 
So that's just it. And um, that's just a simple uh, adapter. We've done the, the, the nitty gritty of it right there in uh, the layout where we've been able to bind, so bind directly in here. We're actually not binding in the adapter. We bind in the layout. So we've been able to call the on-click listener here. We've been able to call the image from the URL that's binding the poster part, which is actually coming from the model. And at the same time, the original title on the, on the title and the vote average, which will actually converted this uh, using uh, to, to string. You know? We converted it uh, from double to string. So that's just it. That's just a complete uh, scenario. You could see how we've been able to break this down to the view model from the repository to the view model and also to the view and also using bindings uh, to actually make this uh, work smoothly. And, um, and that's cool. So if you have any question, I would like you to just drop down in the question section. And please don't forget to subscribe to Delaware Studios and pull the Put on the notifications so that you'll be able to get uh, instant messages on new videos that will be coming right there in this channel. Uh, before I wrap up, the manifest is very important. Uh, you need to in include the internet uh, permission and also the access network state because you're actually checking if there's an internet availability before you actually uh, execute some of your actions so that's very important and don't forget when you're using MovieDB api you need to uh, uh pull this which is uses clear text traffic uh which is true if you omit this you'll be having issues with uh, the clear text uh permission or prohibited so once you put that you're, you're good to go so with that you're fine and you can have this uh, wonderful screen right there looking at you uh, where you have the list of movies uh, which are being displayed just in a grid. So this is a basic, simple way to consume APIs using retrofit and using Hute as your dependency injection and uh, wrapping it around uh, Kotlin and making it uh, work gracefully. In the next video, we'll be extending from this. Uh, we need to actually make some queries like uh, pages. We need to talk about pagination. We need to uh, fetch, keep uh, use uh, probably a lazy, a lazy scroll. Probably when you scroll to the bottom, uh, let's fetch for more for more popular movies until you get exhausted or until you get to the last page. So you could be needing that to you know, your project when you need to uh, pass through multiple pages of lengthy uh, data, which you have, you need to actually break them down into pages. or you need to paginate them. So we'll be talking about that in the next video. So don't go anywhere. I'll stick glue with the Larry Studios. Bye bye for now.